Hey guys, in this video, I've got a few engineering books to share with you. So if you're at all curious about making your own synths, whether digital or analog, or if you're really curious about the low level underlying inner workings of synthesizers or sound in general, these might be helpful for you. So these are very technical academic textbooks. They're not for high level. So if you're just looking for synthesis tutorials or how to make sounds and stuff like that, I'm gonna do a separate video for that, for those resources. This is more for the super technical people out there, mathematicians, uh, coders, whatever, If you're, or if you're just super curious about this low level kind of stuff, this might be helpful for you. So I'm gonna break this down into a few different sections. We're gonna start off with the basics of the analog side, the basics of the digital side, and then we're gonna kind of build on top of that and I'll give you some interesting resources and books if you're interested in learning more deep on one direction or the other. All right, let's start off on the analog branch. So one thing to keep in mind at a high level is that engineering, a lot of it is based on abstraction. So you wanna start with a very low level understanding of something and then on top of that, you build a certain set of abstractions and you kind of keep going until you're at a point where you're just working with high level components. So if we start at the super low level basics of the analog electronics world, these are some three interesting books. The Art of Electronics is kind of the Bible. Uh, you'll probably hear it referenced in a lot of different circles. I mean, if you wanna know anything about electronics, if you've ever wondered how a capacitor works or what an op amp is, plus many, many, many more things. This is kind of the Bible and huge reference manual. And on that note, I want to kind of share how I use these books. So obviously these are not novels. <laughs> it's not something you're gonna kind of read from beginning to end uh, while lying in bed or something. These are more reference manuals, or at least that's how I look at them. Obviously, I'm not gonna read this entire book because uh, I don't have the time and I'm frankly not interested in all the different details. But it's a good little reference point for, for example, if you're working on a small little circuit and you're wondering how can I use this in this configuration, you can kind of quickly reference it and see the technical details if you need to. Obviously, if you're going to school for this, you might actually have to read the whole thing. Uh, but I'm, this video is more for kind of hobbyists or people who just want to dabble. So yeah, another one, Practical Electronics for Inventors, a little more high level, a little more put into practice, but again, shows you circuits and a bunch of different components. There's a lot of math and physics in here. So if you're kind of scared of that stuff, you can probably still get a lot of value out of it, but just be aware that it's there. And then finally, Troubleshooting Analog Circuits. This is kind of an old school book. This is more once you actually start building things and you want to kind of troubleshoot them and less for if you're just looking for the high level knowledge to start off with. So yeah, again, these are not related to sound necessarily, but these are the building blocks on top of which all other analog circuits will be based on. All right, moving up one layer of abstraction higher, we have these two books which are more applicable to music directly for synthesizers and audio projects in general. This first one here is for purely analog circuits. It's Make Analog Synthesizers by Ray Wilson, who passed away recently. Uh, he was the guy behind Music from Outer Space, which did a lot of cool modular stuff. But yeah, super great book. He walks you through building this little, uh, tiny little synthesizer here, fully analog. He shows you the schematic for the whole thing and then walks you through how everything works component by component. So he'll walk you through the voltage controlled oscillator, filter, envelopes, LFOs, explain why each component is there. So it's a great way to understand and kind of bridge the gap between knowing how individual components work and then knowing how they get used together to create uh, things that make sounds. And then similarly, we have this Arduino for musicians, which is a great little resource and has a lot of different tips and tricks for using the Arduino platform to make music stuff. And now we're getting into the digital domain because we're programming a microcontroller here. So if you're not familiar, Arduino is just this open source platform for making anything really. It's not just related to music. People use Arduinos to make wearables with lights, uh, make little robots. Effectively, you can do anything. It's like kind of a giant playground but you can also use it for creating music things like simple MIDI apps or even full-fledged synthesizers, depending on which uh, chip you have. So yeah, this is a great book that kind of walks you through how to use stuff with Arduino specifically, but obviously you can pick up general concepts along the way that can be applied to any platform. All right, so here I have a few different Arduino boards just to give you a sense for what they look like and what they feel like. 
Effectively, they're all little circuits with microcontrollers in them and a bunch of different pins that you can connect wires to to make prototypes. And they come in lots of different flavors. This is the Uno, which is the most basic one. It's very primitive, so you're probably not going to do any real audio processing on here. But you can do pretty good MIDI stuff on it, which I've done with my little project here, Jack and Jill, which I did a video on a few years ago, which effectively you can see this chip here is here. And I've just kind of replicated the Uno. You have a few MIDI jacks, a few sliders, buttons, and it just generates random MIDI. And the Uno is perfectly capable of doing that kind of stuff. Then you have different flavors like the 101 and the Zero, and they start adding really fancy functionality like Bluetooth, and you get really powerful processors on these as well. Then you have more advanced ones like the Mega and Due, and they just have different kinds of chips with lots more different functionality. But everything is abstracted away through the Arduino platform, so the code you write looks very similar for any type of chip that you have here. All right, so the way you would do something like this is you have this breadboard, which is just a piece of metal that is connected in certain specific ways. And then you would use these little wires to connect components into here. So you would plug like resistors, capacitors, transistors, wire them together. And then you can have wires going into here directly. And then you have a microcontroller here, which reads that analog voltage, turns it into some digital signal, and then in code, you can process that. And you can use this as a prototyping thing. So you can just have your Arduino here, make your little prototype. And you can just have this as is. You can probably ship this in some kind of janky way <laughs> in uh, enclosure if you wanted to. But usually what people do is you, since this is open source, you can get the kind of schematic for the basics of what it takes to run this microcontroller and translate it into your own PCB or printed circuit board, which is what I did here. So effectively, the sub circuit that is required to power this microcontroller is all included here. But obviously, I didn't include things like the USB port, which I don't need here, which is mainly for programming. Anyways, this is not a tutorial on the Arduino, but I just wanted to give you a flavor for the kinds of things you can do. And this is a great way if you're looking to make synths or dabble with electronics and also digital coding at a low level. This is a great platform because it's super easy to get into and there's tons of different resources. And it's a great way to have fun if you want to build a little MIDI sequencer or a MIDI controller or anything like that. Uh, it's a great learning tool for sure. And let me know if you guys are interested in more of the technical side of this. I can definitely do more tutorials geared towards Arduino. I just don't know if there's enough interest in that because the channel is more about music and high level stuff. But if enough people are interested in the low level kind of technical side and coding and circuits, um, yeah, I can definitely make more content for that for sure. All right, so that was sort of the analog slash very primitive digital microcontroller side of the branch. Now let's move on to the kind of high level digital side of things. So again, we have layers of abstraction. So the first layer you want to learn the basics of digital signal processing and signal processing in general before you can build on top of that to add high level stuff like building synthesizers. So there are tons of different resources on digital signal processing or DSP, and it's a field that is super wide. Basically, anytime you're processing any kind of digital signal, there is some kind of DSP there, not just for music. You have this for video, for image, in the medical field, etc. It's just all over the place. So you want to generally have a rough understanding of the high-level concepts, and then you can kind of zone in on the audio side of things, which is more limited uh, for us here. All right, so one super high level book is Fundamentals of Signals and Systems. Again, you're not going to learn anything about specifically making synthesizers, but this is a good kind of building block. Then you have Understanding Digital Signal Processing here by Richard Lyon. And finally, you have The Scientist and Engineer's Guide to Signal Processing by Stephen Smith. Obviously, you don't need all three. I'm just showing you the examples of the ones I have. Uh, these two I had in school, and this one I got later. And honestly, this is my favorite one because it's high level enough and a bit more practical than these two here. But this field is super hard and challenging, at least for me. Um, it's You can grasp the basics very quickly, but there's a lot of advanced math going on. And it could be hard to wrap your head around all the different concepts for sure, especially as you're getting into the nitty gritty. And so I just wanted to say that you don't have to know all the basics. You don't have to know all the math if you're just trying to build a synthesizer. But if you're really curious, these are good books to have, at least as references. Again, you don't have to read this like a novel from, from to back, but it's good to have in your 
kind of arsenal if you ever run into something and you want to dive a little more deeper, especially if you're building custom algorithms for stuff that doesn't already exist out there. Even if you get these books, you don't have to read them all in one shot. One thing you can do as a hack is just read the table of contents and roughly memorize the kinds of stuff that are talked about in the book. And this is a good way to kind of know what types of information you have in your library so that as you're working on something, if something comes up in your mind, you might remember, oh yeah, remember that topic was in the table of contents of this book here. And then you can kind of just cherry pick that little bit of information there. And over time, you'll find that as you accumulate these little bits of information, they all start aggregating together. And then eventually you kind of learn more and more. All right, moving up one layer of abstraction higher. Once you got the basics of digital signal processing and how signals are represented in a digital domain, you can kind of move up to more high level stuff like actually building audio effects. So here are two interesting books related to audio effects. We have Audio Effects Theory Implementation Application by Rice and McPherson. And then we have Da Effects <laughs> or Digital Audio Effects by Udo Zoser. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Again, I'm not going to go over the details of these books because we'll be here forever. Uh, but yeah, just I'll put the, all the links in the description. Check them out. Read the table of contents. And if it has the kind of stuff you're interested in, you might consider checking it out. But for this video, I'm just giving you a high level overview of all the kind of stuff that exists out there. All right, next we have these two books from Julius Smith, who's sort of a god in the DSP world. I believe he's a professor at Stanford and he's written tons of great books and kind of co-wrote other books. So you'll find his name around a lot. And he has these series of uh, volumes here. I only have the second and third. The first one, I forget what it is. But the second one here is Introduction to Digital Filters. And in this case, filters means effectively anything that can process a signal, not just the traditional kind of low pass, high pass stuff you heard in synthesizers. Uh, so great way to get the basics there. And then you have physical audio signal processing. And this book is also a really great Bible for anything related to sound design, especially physical modeling and stuff like that. Lots of knowledge to be had here. And again, treat them like reference guides rather than novels. Otherwise, your head will explode. All right, and finally, we have the highest level abstraction, which is the high level object oriented programming language, in this case, C++, which is by far the most dominant language in the audio DSP world, uh, for sure. So worth learning if you want to get into that field. If you're completely new to programming, C++ can be a little daunting. And well, even if you're not new to programming, C++ can be daunting, uh, but especially if you're new. And also writing audio plugins can be challenging if you're new. So both C++ and making your own plugins are definitely up there at the kind of skill level. So it could be a little daunting and discouraging if you're completely new to just jump into that. Not that I want to discourage anyone from trying, um, but there are kind of simpler ways you can build up to that by using other simpler tools like C Sound or some libraries in Ruby or even Swift if you're into iOS and Mac coding. There's a framework called AudioKit, so you can start off with that, which is probably the more sane approach before you go into the weeds here. But that being said, C++ is a good language to learn anyways, because it's always going to have some kind of use, at least in this field. And yeah, there's a framework called Juice, so J-U-C-E dot com, which gives you a way, it's basically a framework that wraps around all the complexities of managing VSTs and AUs and multi-platform stuff. So it allows you to quickly build plugins that work in any DAW on any OS by just focusing on the specifics of your plugin rather than the mechanics of how to make everything work. So there's definitely that which helps a lot um, in terms of building your own plugins if that's what you're into. And I guess that's another meta tip is if you want to learn something like this, it could be a little overwhelming at the beginning and don't feel like you have to learn everything all at once or everything ever. I mean, it's impossible to learn everything. Uh, there's just not enough time in the universe. But um, one way to kind of help hone yourself in is pick a specific project that you want to build for yourself and use that as the catalyst to help you learn and figure out which rabbit holes to go down in. So for example, if you wanted to build a small MIDI sequencer, that would be a great first project. 
That way you're not dealing with all your rate code and you're dealing with MIDI, which is a bit simpler, although arguably <laughs> it's got its own quirks. But anyways, pick a specific project. And as you're working towards that project, you'll have questions about specific things that you need to figure out. And then those things will take you down specific paths. And once you're done with that project, you would have accumulated a certain set of knowledge. You've kind of leveled up. And then you pick another project and then you work on that. And eventually you're kind of leveling up in a bunch of different domains. Eventually you look back and you have aggregated a set of knowledge. So that's one way to get structured learning outside of a school environment. Just pick a project that you love and use that as a forcing function and let the passion kind of drive you through the hard points. All right, that was a lot of blah, blah. So let's get into the books here. First, the C++ programming language, super simple title, title but it's by Bjorn Stormstrup. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but he's the creator of the language. So really you can't get it from a better source. Really well-written book. This is C++ 11 specifically. I believe they're at 14 now. I don't actually code C++ that much or at all <laughs> anymore. Um, so I'm not super in touch with the latest and greatest tech in C++, but if you're starting off, you don't even have to worry about the details of the kind of higher level versions. You want to grasp the basics first, and those are pretty common across the board. And then we have these two books here by Will Perkle. Again, <laughs> I hope I'm not butchering that. Um, these are more specifically for utilizing C++ to build both audio effects, which is this book, and synthesizers, which is this book here. And he uses this other thing called Rack Effects, which is another kind of framework for building plugins. Uh, but yeah, I would recommend checking out Juice if you're at all into plugins. But these are great books just to get the basic concepts and different uh, things that would apply in general, regardless of which framework you're using. Because the, the framework is sort of the skeleton around it and is usually not related to the actual plugin you're making. But the, the DSP code that you're writing inside, like if you're building a reverb, that kind of knowledge can apply anywhere, regardless of which framework uh, you're using, if that makes sense. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. Hopefully you found this stuff interesting. Again, I'm just kind of breezing through the high level stuff. Uh, otherwise, this video would be way too long. Also, I haven't read these books in a long time, so my memories are a little rusty on them as well. But hopefully this gives you a good high level view of the general direction and the types of books. Obviously, you don't have to buy every book I mentioned here. But if you do, I'll put links in the description. Uh, the more important thing is just to kind of figure out which subsection of this you're interested in and then maybe go deeper on that hole. Uh, otherwise, you'll kind of spread yourself too thin if you try to do everything at once. If you try to master transistors and also master C++, you're kind of splitting yourself in two opposite directions. Um, not to say that that knowledge can't be useful later, especially if you're making something like a Eurorack module where you need both the electronics and the coding, if it's a digital module. But anyways, uh, yeah, you can easily distract yourself and there's so much knowledge, it could be overwhelming. So yeah, like I said, pick a project, stick with it and figure out only the bare necessities you need to make that one project work. And then once you're done, you will have accumulated a good foundation and basic set of knowledge. And practical knowledge outweighs theoretical knowledge any day of the week, in my opinion. So yeah, do that. Hopefully this was fun and interesting. If you have any questions, let me know. Also, if you have any recommendations and resources and books and videos or whatever that you found useful from more of a technical side of things, Definitely share those in the comments because I want to learn that stuff more as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one.